bravery of our warriors, the grace of our horses, the beauty of our women. But we are also known for darker things, for things that come in the night. The ghoul that eats the flesh of the dead, the ghost that haunts the cemetery, the werewolf that howls under the full moon. But mostly we are known for the vampire, for those that drink the blood of the living. Most feared of all vampire is the Lederch. And I have seen one. In our village there was a couple, Gregor and Anna, as they were very much in love. Sadly, Anna could not have children. And some in the village encouraged Gregor to put her aside. For how can you work a farm without the children? But Gregor's love for Anna was so great, he would not do this. Sadly, three years after they were wed, Gregor died in a horrible accident on the farm. And Anna's soul became a grief. Which, as you know, draws the Liderch, the darkness of the heart, calls to it. The women of the village took it upon ourselves to take care of Anna. One of us would go each evening, bringing her food, to keep her company. A couple of weeks after Gregor died, was my turn, and I brought her some of my soup, which, as you know, is the best soup in the village. <laughs> <laughs> and as Anna and I sat there and talked, I noticed the twinkle in her eye. The twinkle a woman gets when she has taken a lover. Anna, I said, have you <laughs> taken a lover? Oh, Sophia, she said, I have, but he is only in my dreams. He comes to me at night when I sleep, and he loves me. But when I wake up, I feel this Fate upon my chest, as if something had sat upon it. At this, my friends, I knew fear. And the leader had come to her. As darkness began to fall, Anna basically pushed me out of the house. <laughs> so she could go to sleep and wait for her lover. But I did not go home. I went to the woods by her house to watch, to wait. Darkness fell, and I saw in the sky a blood-red star that came down and landed before her door. The light fell away, and there he stood, the Liderch, dark man, dark hat, dark He went into her house, and I stood, and I quaked, and I watched, and I waited. And after just more than an hour, out he came again, the dark man, dark hat, dark coat, dark boots, and again became the blood-red star and rose into the sky. I raced into the house, praying to the mother Mary that she was still alive. Please let Anna still be alive. And there she lay in her bed, pale, unmoving. I held my hand over her mouth to feel for the breath. There the slightest pulse. And I woke her and gave her some more of my soup. And told her, Anna, the Liderch has come. And Anna began to cry. <coughs> And I began to cry, but told her, do not be afraid, for my great-grandmother has told to me how to get rid of this Liderch, and that I would come the next night, and together we would defeat this. And so I went home. 
The next morning, I sent my son Janos to Elisabetta's house, who was to go that evening, telling her no need to go, I would be going back to Anna's house. Now, I am sure that some of you men are saying to yourselves, Sophia, why do you not tell your husband and let the man handle this problem? <laughs> now, ladies, yes, what would the man do? Pull out their sword, go running around all brave and cocksure. <coughs> this is not what we need. We need guile. Gunning. Cunning. Guile. <laughs> A woman. So, that night again I went back to Anna's house with my soup. And told her what my great-grandmother had said to me. Then did he dare lay with her. She should get up and take one of its boots and hide it. I know it sounds kind of silly, but this is how you do this in the lines of the matter. So, again, the sun began to set. Again, I went back outside to the woods to watch, to wait. And there he came, the blood red star from the sky and landed before her door. The light fell away, revealing the Liderch, the dark man in a dark hat, a dark coat, a dark boots. And he went there. And so I stood with the moon and the stars to watch and to wait. And after less than an hour, I hear the yelling begin. And the banging began, and I know she has hidden the boots, and the Lidarch is angry. And I pray to keep her safe. And the door was thrown open, and there he stood in the doorway, the Lidarch, the dark man, with the dark hat, the dark coat. No boots. Instead of feet. And in my fear, I must have made some sound, <gasps> perhaps. And it turned and looked at where I hid in the woods and began to walk towards me. And this I closed my eyes. Oh, sweet mother, protect me. Oh, Savior, save me. Oh, sweet mother, protect me. Oh, Savior, save me. And just as it became so close that it could not but see me. next to me, and the lady edge turned to see it go, and it stomped back, and once again became a blood red star and rose into the sky. I raced, I raced into Anna's house, praying to all that she would still be alive, and there she lay again, so still. And again, I held my hand over her mouth. The slight puffs of air. And again, I woke Anna. Please wake up, Anna. Please wake up, Anna. And she awoke. And then she gave me the boot of the Lidarch. And we went out and built the largest bonfire in all the lands of the Magyar and burnt that boot so that never again did the Lidarch come to my people, to my village. So two things, my friends. Now you know how to drive away the Lidarch. But greatest of all, do not allow the dark blackness of the soul to overcome you, for you never know what you may call.